my God and my Father, we come uh, knowing that without you we are nothing. And because of your love, you picked us up out of nothing and gave us an opportunity to serve on your stage and to be an ambassador for your word. Thank you for all of the things you've implanted into our lives this week. Thank you for these workers in the family who have taken leadership in so many capacities and brought not only information, but joy and victory. And we're going home another way. We're going home to be able to attack the devil on the front where he is and tell him his kingdom must come down. To have him to know that with God all things are possible. We're going to build greater homes and we're going to build greater families. We're going to build greater churches and we're going to do the things that the devil said we couldn't do. And I just want to say... God, if I don't say anything else, do know I say thank you. From the depths of my heart, I can't testify everything you've done, but I thank you. And if it had not been for you, my God, you look beyond. You saw the need, and you've been meeting them. You use your people. We've come. We didn't have a whole lot, but we've come. Shared that we had. You blessed us. And, and then God bless us as we return to our various homes and various ministries and set our souls on fire. Bless every congregation. Do the unusual. And God will give you glory. It's not about us. It's all about you. Strengthen us for this task. Give us vision and insight into where we must go. Now help us to say a word of encouragement. And we'll give you the glory. Amen. Before you sit down, tell your neighbor, I want to be used of the Lord. Will you pray for me? Now, I did tell you whatever I didn't say today or, or didn't do what you want to hear me do, we're doing it in the forum. And I'm expecting everybody to be there so we can be knowledgeable of what's going on. And I'm going to give my little brothers and sisters, if you got to make a restroom call, do it. But if not, then sit down. Look at somebody and say, this is some church. <laughs> my God, we've had church if we don't have no church today. This, this pulpit has been blessed and everyone who came came with a word God has done some unusual things and we have used some oh my God some great times and so I don't have a whole lot of time to, to talk to you but, but just to stand in your presence is enough for me and to be able to say, you accepted me to become leader for you. And we've walked together. We've cried together. We've been in trouble together. But through it all, we're brothers and sisters. And ain't no devil in hell big enough to tear up the family. Now, if I was in that old church, Somebody say, drive him away, Lord. Drive him away, Lord. We don't need him here. We don't need him here. Drive him away, Lord. Drive him away, Lord. Getting in, brother.
of the Mosley way, y'all. Don't you know? down, tell somebody, use me. You got a brother or sister sitting next to you that has an unspoken need before God. I want you to do what God empowered you to do. Lay your hands on that individual and say, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Tell them that again.
have to let the devil know you not the boss. Drive him away, Lord. Drive him away, Lord. upon me to say to you out of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven we've been challenged We've been blessed, and uh, the Lord wanted me to tell you a strange kind of sermon, but this is the closing moment of your convocation. Let's start something. Let's. Now, I'm not going to be able to develop that because y'all use a whole lot of time and I don't want you on the road, so, so I'm just going to hurry and make one, two, three, four points, but let's... If you listen to all of the challenges that we have gotten 
this past few days. It was an indication and a challenge for Rasta. We cannot go back home and do business as usual. We got to. The church cannot stay without power. Choirs can't be just making noise. The pool can, pulpit cannot be just a center for attraction. We must come to grips because the world needs to know the church is starting. We've been so occupied with the dangers which threaten that we have tended to fall into a negative attitude. We got a feeling this is the way it's got to be. We got an impression it's out of control and we can't do anything about it. Churches have grown to, to neutral, standing still, raising the motor but going nowhere, singing but feeling nothing. Preaching but knowing nothing. Witnessing but catching nothing. Ah, we get the feeling we live to stop something. That's what we've been involved in. Graph in politics, inflation in finance, communism in the world politics. And we could go on and on. But our need to stop something, we have no time to start something. Because we're so busy trying to. I come by to tell you, take the, the emergency brakes off. Let's start something. I want to suggest four things, and, and I want us to leave this convocation knowing that God has challenged us. Yeah. The wise man said there's a time and a season. And I want you to know this is the time. This is the season. And what I'd like for you to understand is that the first thing we want to do it start a shout of faith and hope and goodwill. We're not sad, folks. We got problems. We have burdens. We have financial shortage. But we're not without faith. We're not without hope. Look like nobody want to be saved, but there is hope. Look like the church is sad, dumb, but there is. Holy Ghost is still waiting. And they that wait, don't get tired waiting. He knows when to come. He may not come on our schedule, but whenever he comes, he's on time. He's waiting on some of the other folks to come. So when he comes, he won't have to come back to do cleanup. We'll all be there together. We may have to solo for a while. You may be standing alone for a little moment, but what I want to give you some courage, if you stand long enough, some con con concerned, courageous soul will join you, and then another one, and then another one, 
And then a mighty shout will take place. It will be heard around your church, your city. And victory will be heard everywhere. Stop minimizing your power. Stop minimizing your ability to do things for God. Don't worry about folks who criticizing you. Don't worry about folks who say you're never going to make it. Don't worry. Pray for those who walk away from you because they found something that they call better. But I understand you don't know what better is. That man who walks out on a good woman talking about he found something better is because his focus is out of his mind has left him. His sanity is no longer there. He's drifting on the surface. But I heard that old time say, hold to God. We have to get to the place that we know who we are. We know who we are. Let hell come if it will. But I'm standing on a solid rock, storm may come, wind may blow, rain may fall, but if I can just, it's going to be all right. See, our trouble is we get, you know, and I tell folks, if you're going to quit the woman, stop running her down. If you're going to leave the man, Leave him alone. And I don't, if, if folks don't want to be with the first jurisdiction family, don't fall out with them. Just pray for them because they don't have good reason. Don't leave the best thing that ever happened to you. I'm glad for the bishop from Atlanta, but uh, you know. But I'm going to stay home. They told me he's leaving. But you see, what you've got to understand is that you must be that tree that's planted fire. We got a lot of stuff going on in the airways and a lot of folks creeping up in your city and a lot of folks walk away from the church talking about there ain't nothing here and they go out there and they get some phony name and, and get some... But most time when they left... They left because they could not find a fit. They weren't ready to work with anybody. They want to be grand. When you had nothing to be grand about. You don't know where you come from. You don't know what you've got to offer. But they that wait. Wish I had some waiting folk here. Storm may come. Rain may fall. Look like you're going to wash away. But wait on it. Crying, but hurt, misunderstood. And it does not look like he's coming. Wait. Because if you wait, he knows when to come. I, I learned a long time ago as a little boy, he knows just. How much? And when that load gets, he knows how to get underneath it. Don't run away from your church. Don't run away from your fellowship. Don't understand, folks. You, 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 you fool around, man. Let folks mess you up and make believe you grand and wonderful. If the Lord doesn't put you up, you're not going anywhere. And sometimes what you're seeking is not what you need. When I was looking for, got serious about trying to find a wife, a whole lot of recommendation coming from everywhere. But I kept on telling God what I thought I needed. I didn't know where God was going to take me, but I had enough sense with a praying mama that I heard calling my name, 
to try to find a wife that would be a prayer warrior and all these other things. And I know when I met her and went to see her, she wondered where that little boy was coming. College professors trying to impress her. And here's a boy with one suit, one pair of shoes. But I ain't shucking and jiving either. Walking. And there were others who had arrived and, and trying to invite her to join them. But I didn't have to get in a hurry because. I know what the Lord told me. He's going to supply my need. It took her a little time to, to understand it because she was a soul learner. But when she looked back over her life, She discovered, I told them college men and the professors was after her. They were dressed up, they had those automobiles, but I had Jesus. And he told me, if you have not, it's because you didn't ask me. And would you know? When I told her, you're going to be my wife, she looked at me as she didn't understand English. <laughs> but the proof is, after 50 odd years, I was a prophet. I got problem with them prophesying folks who never have a prophecy to come true. But we got to be ready to stand up and prophesy. Tell the devil, you are not big enough to tear our church up. You're not big enough to tear this band up. You're not big enough to wreck the choir. Because we going to exercise faith, hope, and goodwill. And so, I want to encourage you, after all of this eating you've been doing this past week, I want you to start a chain of good deeds by being kind, generous, and helpful to one in need. Urge the one that you help to pass the kindness on to another until it reaches everyone. We got to tell one another how blessed we are. We're not bragging, but share. We don't need envy. We don't need strife. Oh, you've been, you've had your blessed messages, but to take this what I'm going to give you today. I want you to understand that we got to get another grip on faith. We got to get another grip on hope. We got to get some goodwill in us. Go back and get that thought. Make the devil leave me alone. You got to tell God I need the devil to get off my time. I'm trying to build this Bible band. I'm trying to build this Sunday school. I'm trying to perfect this choir. But any time you get to work for God, the devil is going to get busy. Are you crying and getting discouraged? Just know God has a timing, and you got to not watch your watch, but say, God, I'm willing to wait on you. And so I want you to start a chain of good deeds.
being kind and generous and helpful to others. And then encourage them to do likewise. And then I want to encourage you as we leave this convocation to start a fag of righteousness. A fag for righteousness. Let it be known by the deeds you do. Let folks know that you belong to the Lord Jesus. You don't have to tell them. Just let them see by the deeds you do. Jesus told us, be not overcome with evil. But overcome evil with it. You need not worry. Thinking somebody overlook you, just wait on the Lord. If you wait on God, God will come to you. Supervisor was right when back there, it, she was impregnated. She told the world, I belong. And when you know who you belong to, don't get all out of shape. Don't think you're being misused because it looks like you've been passed over. You've got to know that's, a, that's the devil trying to give you the wrong mindset. What you've got to understand, God told me to stand still. Wait on it. When you've done all you know how to do. Don't get in a hurry. Stay on the battlefield. Sure, you're going to have some evil rising up against you. Sure, you're going to have some difficulties ahead of you. I want you to get ready and leave this convocation with the understanding I am going to start living all the days of my life. What I'm going to do, preacher, I'm going to let my light shine. I want the world to see who I am and whose I am. I want to testify that I'm faithful, talked about and criticized by being a somebody's flunky, but he told me my gift to make room for me. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about folks talking about you. I think about the days when I was the flunky in their mind. But I was doing what God gifted me to do. And God said in due time, I'll bring you where I want you to be. If you live right, if you walk right, if you talk right, you don't have to envy anybody else what God has for you. The devil and all of his imps can't take it from you. Stand your ground. Build that Sunday school class. Build that prayer band. Build that prayer meeting. Build that youth group. Build that choir. Stop talking about what you can't do. Stop talking about who's trying to block you. Use that same energy to do something rather than complain about something. Many of us waste too much time feeling sorry for ourselves. You don't need a pity party, David. God has already burst that balloon. He went to the cross, stretched out his hand. Then finally said, Father, into thy hand, I commend my spirit. I'll be what you want to be. I've done what you needed done. My brothers and sisters, wherever God has you, that's where God needs you. That didn't come out right. I'll say it again. Wherever God has you, that's where God needs you. Did you get that? 
And when you get that kind of understanding, you can be comfortable. You don't need to be a superintendent. He can use you better somewhere else. You don't have to be the pastor to be wonderful. You don't need to be the church mother. You don't need to be the head of that. Just be faithful at where God has placed you. And if you let God use you, he will do mighty things for you. Mother, you may not be identified, but serve well. And when all of this is over, these leaders are all decked out in their regalia. These preachers are all tied up. But when all that is over, it won't matter. All you want to hear, servant, 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 not missionary. Not supervisor, not elder, not pastor, not superintendent, but servant. Now we've had enough preaching here this week. We've had enough teaching. We've had enough practicing. What's important is that we go home and put it to work. Build greater Sunday school. Build greater Bible band. Young Women Christian Council. Let's go back and do a job. God bless Brother Mosley to spend this time developing choir members. Go back home and ask your pastor, let me help build the choir. You don't have to be the president. The most powerful folks are the folks who work in the background anyway. They're the one who get it done. The people may not know, but God is keeping the record. When you're out there trying to get your act, your Lord, when you get it, you got everything you're going to get. But if you go on there and work in the background, God will reward, will reward you, will reward you, will reward you in due and somebody say, I didn't know you were there. They're gifts. And God knows when you bring forth. I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, envy doesn't get you anywhere but down. Just because you didn't get it because you thought you had it. But God knew that's what not you, you needed. And when you can understand, I don't need it, because if God wanted me to have it, nobody could have kept it from me. If you didn't get what you thought you should have had, recognize this. If God wanted you to have it, it shows. And then sometime, after it all happened, then God come back and said, now you're ready for it. Your attitude wasn't right. You didn't want to pay the price. Baby, these positions in high seats don't mean a thing but work. Oh, they privileged to sit up here, but it's your gift will make room for you. Stop envying folks. Get in there and do work. And God will make a way. While you're sitting where you're sitting, I want you to slip your hand in somebody's hand. You don't need to know the name, but pray that God would bless them. That God will make a way. That God will do the unusual. I don't know what your brother or sister needs, but while you're there, you ought to know it. While you're there, you ought to be willing to know that God will do what's necessary.
Oh, yeah, keep on praying, praying. Pray for that sister. Pray for that brother. These signs shall follow them that... Come on, come on, somebody. Cast the devil away from them. Huh? You got power. Use your authority. Devil, the saints are locked in. The army of God in the first jurisdiction is rising up. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Let the power in you work in the behalf of somebody else. Now, thank God for the answer. Thank God for the answer. Open your mouth and thank God. Is there anybody here who's not saved and need to be saved today? You're not comfortable going home without being saved. If you are, just raise your hand wherever you are and say, I need to be saved. My, what a house. All these folks are saved. I think you ought to thank God. God bless you and have a smile on you. Uh, let's start something. Let's go back, prayer meeting, knocking on doors, reaching out to people, and let's make a difference. What do you say about it? Now, we will get in the forum. All of us need to be back for the forum next month, and we'll get a more definitive direction. Pray for the leadership and we will do all these things now. And you know, I don't feel sorry for folks who are out looking for secondhand information when you could have got it firsthand. I don't have a sympathy for you. You ought to know nobody going to tell it straight like you can get it. Is Joseph Pope here today or they didn't make it? Did Brother Joseph Pope didn't make the meeting. Joseph Pope has been a faithful warrior, and I wanted to award him, and I'll send this to him for his many years of faithful and dedicated service to the Kojic men and the Nehemiah builders of the first jurisdiction of Louisiana. Is his pastor here today? His pastor going to see that he get it. So don't you worry about it. There is a young man that didn't have good sense, but he believed in another young man who was trying to go somewhere. And people were talking about him, putting him on the sideline. But that was a young man uh, who dared to have a broke down station wagon, filled it up, came to join that little boy that everybody was talking about, and decided I'll walk with you. My pastor may not agree, but I'm gonna walk with you. The people around where I am don't believe what you're doing, but I'm gonna walk with you. And dared to be different and supported Roy Winbush in his infancy in the ministry in this jurisdiction. And that young man has lived to this day 
And I wanted to say to him, who helped me to carve out the Kojic men, the Nehemiah builders, and he's still here. He's been a blessing. And I want to say to him publicly, thank you, Deacon Samuel Gatlin. Thank you. If he's here, bring him this way. Deacon Samuel Gatlin. Oh, there he is. Just incidentally, he is the father of Bishop Gatlin. Amen. He was but a deacon, if you want to put it that way. But he stood with this little boy trying to make Sunday school work. I, ain't, I don't want you to come up here. I know you can, but I don't want you to do it. You served me so long, let me serve you today. This man had a mind of his own, and he loved the church. And he took a beating for me when he shouldn't have been. But he stood for what he saw was progress. Loaded up a broke down station wagon with Alton Gatlin. What's that other boy's name? Gerald and a Teresa and a Tawana, Angela, and everybody else's children could get in there. And they made the convention, supported it. It's hard when you're supporting another man's vision and it ain't yours and they're beating you up for it. But he stayed in the gap. I thank you for being there for me, for encouraging me, taking the tough assignment. I'm sorry you had to defend me when you had no right to, but you took the lick. And so today, God let you live long enough for me to be able to say publicly, thank you for the recognition of the services that you've given to your God, this jurisdiction, and you helped me to carve out the Kojic men that folks thought was foolish. Many things started in Louisiana that the National Church didn't even know about. We birthed it here. And so this man, I'm glad he may be on a walker, but he's walking. And to tell the truth, he got to be able to walk because, you know, y'all know his wife? All right. <laughs> Brother Gatlin, thank you. Be blessed. Thanks, sir. Running up here. Look at it. <laughs> well, how blessed we are to have people still with us. Uh, I wanted to uh, be able to salute another young man. I don't know whether he's here or not. The oldest, Logan. Is he here? <laughs> Come on, brother Logan. Now, they didn't know all this was happening. a friend of mine when I was a nobody you say I'm somebody now but, but when the old folks talked about me and called me everything but you know, they called me many names but I knew I wasn't that was my, not my name see you got to know who you are brother Logan stood in the gap 
help us to build Sunday school ministry. I'm, I'm glad he's still here. And I want to give him this Pioneer Award for his excellency in stewardship that he's demonstrated. Many years of service, he's a Sunday school man. Thank the Lord I had quite a few kids, but I do have eight that I believe that Sunday school people, I believe if you call their churches on the Sunday school hour, that they will answer or be answered for. And I thank you, Bishop. I love you, man. Thank you. Now, these are the folks who believed in me when I was out there being hit for other folks and they stood in the gap. And they helped me. We were all on the same page. I just called myself a preacher. They were Sunday school workers and what have you. And I thank God for them still being here. Now, uh, that other person is not here. I don't know what this is. What is this? Jeffrey Williams? Who is he? Is that Jeffrey Williams around here? He's close by somewhere? You may not understand, but it takes a whole lot to be a servant. And it takes a man with a good wife to understand what it is to have a man neglect you to serve another man. That sounds a little funny. And so I want to thank you, Sister William. Stand up, darling, so people will know who you are. You know, I still don't know how to act when these folks try to be so kind to me. Because that's just not me. I've been in the servant role all my life, and so I don't know how to receive it. Because I've always been given. Uh, I'm making him the first jurisdictional chief adjutant. I get a little bit upset. I don't like all this fanfare and they all getting in my way. And it's going to be his job to develop an agency core and, and, and let people know you got to be touchy. I'm, I'm a little touchy. I don't, you know, I don't like all that stuff y'all do. I just like to sneak in and go on. That's where I got my wife. The mother fellow were driving them big cars. They were professors. I was walking around with one suit, one pair of shoes. Can you imagine? And she didn't wear glasses then. But she saw through all of that and said, give me Roy. Boy, you know how to hit that note. <laughs> brother Pope is the other brother who served with me, and I wanted him to have, I wanted them to have served with me, and they're still here. They may be feeble, but they're still here. What's that?
No, you're not Joseph. No, you're the wrong Pope, man. <laughs> they trying to send you up for this? Are you going to take it to him? I just want to be sure he understands. But he's been here with us, a good brother. And you see, you don't have to be on this, all these collars turned around. The person of the Lord, and I'm going to be giving out some more all, all along, but I'm grateful for individuals who are not trying to be seen, but in the background getting the job done. Thank you for our Brother Pope. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, uh, I won't be able to award all of you, but I'm going to continue to seek you out. We're going to continue to try to do some things. It's just, just a sense of appreciation. That's what it's all about. I tell all of you all the time, thank you. But there are some folk, I just want them to have something on their wall. Yes, now. Bishop Gatlin, you going to do those? Mr. Gatlin going to come and try to tell the rest of you, thank you, we'll come back a little later. Let's say amen for our bishop. Uh, the hour is far spent, so if you don't mind, we're going to just call your names, and uh, you will stand where you are to receive your trophies and things. And then at the close of the service, if you will come forward, we'll have the photographer lined up to get your picture, and uh, that will take a little bit of a time. But... Bishop wants to get you back on the road before it gets too late. Is that all right with everyone? Amen. And so we are thankful. Uh, Brother Jeffrey's coming. He's going to give our registration totals first, and then we'll award those of you from USAC. Thank you, Bishop Gallen. First jurisdiction of Louisiana, you did a great job in registration this year. Let's give yourself a hand for registering for this great convention. Our grand total for registration this year was 1,160. Thank God for each one of you registering for this convention. It has been a great one. Now it's time to announce the pre-registration winners for churches. Third place church, Bright Temple Church of God in Christ, pastored by Leroy Ealing. Our second place for pre-registration is none other than Saints Memorial, pastored by our own Bishop Roy Winbush. And first place, none other than White Temple Church of God in Christ. Pastored also by our own Bishop Roy Winbush. Pre registration for districts. Third place, Trinity District, under the supervision of Superintendent Litton Cleveland. I need Superintendent Bernard to stand and Superintendent Sims to stand. These two new superintendents have been battling back and forth, trying to see who's gonna be on top. So for the second place, pre-registration in district is none other than Superintendent Bernard from the Lake Charles District. And first place, pre-registration, J.W. White, under the leadership of Superintendent Samuel Sims. Now on to our overall registration winners. Third place for church, Saints Memorial, Church of God in Christ. Second place, White Temple, Church of God in Christ, Shreveport. First place, 
Emmanuel Church of God in Christ, all pastored by Bishop Roy Winbush. All pastors. <laughs> now for our overall district. Third place, Lake Charles, Superintendent Bernard with 108. Second place, overall district, J.W. White with 116. First place, district, wonder who it is. Lafayette District with 151. The Registration Department would like to also honor and recognize the first person to register, and that is none other than Terry Beckford. She's not here. The first superintendent to register was Superintendent Charles Stevenson. And our first district, district missionary to register was District Missionary Carol Lamore. Thank you much. We are looking for great things in the registration department. You can register for March workers meeting and USAC for next year at the registration desk. Thank you for your support. And the women's convention, which will be in a few weeks. Amen? Thank God. All right. I'm registering right now. Amen. <laughs> God bless you today. Uh, let me do this. Uh, on September the 22nd and the 23rd, the Louisiana Interfaith Council of Churches will be meeting here at headquarters on September the 22nd and the 23rd. And that will be at our headquarters church, Gethsemane. We would love to invite each of you to come down. You will be receiving another email blast and another, uh, some other information from uh, the adjutant to the bishop. So we'd like for you to be here. We have been truly blessed this year. One of our dear friends, uh, the pastor Sam Talbert of Lake Charles, Louisiana, is now the National Baptist uh, president. Hello, somebody. And he is also the, uh, the leader for the Louisiana Council of Interfaith Churches. So we'd love for you to be here. We'll be discussing a lot of things dealing with grants, economic development, and where to find help for your ministry. Many of you are doing youth ministries, you're doing children's ministries, you're doing outreach ministry, you're trying to reach your neighborhood with food services and a number of other things. If you come to this meeting, we will have all of the information available for you that will help you to get the grants you need, to get the startup money that you need, and to find the legal counsel and other people that will help you in developing your vision, your dream, and your idea. There is always somebody who is doing already what you're trying to do. And the good thing is if you become connected with them, then that becomes a part of you. For those of you who are trying to find financing for your churches, and you're finding that Chase, and you're finding that uh, uh, Citibank, and all of the big five will not work with you, there are a number of institutions specifically designed to work with churches and to work with nonprofits. These people have money available for you, and many times they have to send it back because no one applies for it. So I would invite you to come down September the 22nd and September the 23rd. Let somebody say amen. Uh, let me just give you the totals, and then after service, if you'll come up, the photographer will take your picture. In our nursery kindergarten division, third place is Sister Blunt from Monroe, Louisiana. God bless you, darling. Uh, second place is primary two with uh, Sister Teresa Hunt from Opelousas. God bless you, darling. And first place goes to Leslie Dunaway from, where's Leslie from? 
Monroe, Louisiana. And we'd like to thank the children for our daily offerings today of $3,149. Let's say amen, Father. In the Love Alive Middle School Division, first, third place goes to Kim Wells with $293. Second place goes to Deborah Harris with $369, but first place goes to the lovely couple, elder and sister Terry Darby, $938. And so for the middle school, we want to thank you for $1,835. In the high school division, third place goes to Elder Leroy Ely, $454. Second place, Pastor Maurice Johnson, $544, but first place, goes to another couple, Elder and Missionary Alton Clay, $959.67. And we'd like to thank the Love Alive High School Division for $3,120 in our daily offerings. Amen, everybody. The university minister, Brother Horace Bernard and Brother Woodrow Davis, uh, we want to thank you all for $1,686. In the adult division, Third place goes to the ministers and pastors' wives, and that's taught by Sister Gloria Davis, $6,208. Second place goes to the supervisor, $9,315. And first place goes to the superintendent, Superintendent Charles Stevenson, $10,800. We'd like to thank you for a total today in our training division, $51,080. Let everybody say amen. We will be available to do your pictures uh, immediately after church. Come down and get your trophies, and we will go from there. Again, congratulations to all of the honorees. Uh, for those of you who have registered, lunch will be available for you today.